All right, here we have a quick unboxing and first thoughts on the isolation chamber made by Ray. This portable isolator is made up of a punched out aluminum shell with a high density open cell acoustic foam on the inside. It looks like a layer of wool may be underneath the aluminum, but I haven't read any documentation to support this. I'll provide some audio samples towards the end of the video with my final thoughts. I purchased this item from B&H Photo in New York, and there'll be a link to both array reflection shields that I mentioned in the description below. As you can see, this is made up of a pretty decent build, weighing in at only one pound. This has a removable dual layer nylon pot filter and an insert for smaller microphones. This nylon filter can be used or not used depending on your personal preferences. The filter is nice, but keep in mind that it's not fixable unless you're placing the entire piece as the nylon is glued to the aluminum frame. I personally use my metal pot filters because you can always clean and reuse them. Nylon filters tend to block more of the higher frequencies than my personal experiences as well. Be aware of the microphone size limitations too, as they always show these isolation filters or chambers being used with the UAD7 and the directions say to insert it from the opening. With this particular chamber, I find that the slate VMS is too long, so I have to insert it from the bottom. This mic has no switches and has a smooth finish to the top so it slides in pretty easy. If you're worried about the mic and have no switches, you could always place a piece of plastic wrap to protect it and remove it once it's in the correct position. Once finished, you can slide in the nylon filter, then tighten the screw if you plan on using that filter or just use your metal pop filter instead. This is a great portable option for someone like myself using a boom arm in a limited space with a low ceiling. I have the ultimate stand on wheels and have the boom extended horizontal so I can't utilize my SE reflection filter correctly at a usable distance. I can't hang my setup upside down either due to the low ceiling. You want to have your mic capsule in the center of the isolator and this may or may not cause your mic to sit correctly in the shock mount. If this is the case, just push the XLR connector through the hole of the shock mount and connect the mic with the isolator already attached in its correct position. From there, just let the isolator sit on top of the shock mount with the XLR cord running through the shock mount. I don't have an answer if you're hanging your mic upside down as I'm not sure how this will work for you. If your mic offers a standard mic mount, that may work. Just make sure your isolator is snug to your mic and you should be good to go. Alright, so here's my final thoughts. I find this particular chamber to sort of emphasize the vocals by focusing it or bringing it more to the front. This may also bring any room noise up as well, so keep that in mind. It does do well at reducing room noise as far as reflections go, but it won't completely eliminate them, and this will vary depending on your space, sound source, or input volume of that sound source. My space is not acoustically treated except for some acoustic foam in random places like most people. This helps, but I don't have any bass traps which are essential in treating your space. The punched out aluminum is supposed to help out with some of those low to mid frequencies, but there's no true replacement for a professionally treated space, so keep that in mind. This will reduce more of the higher frequency reflections as most reflection filters do. They claim to have zero coloration, but even SE filters don't claim 100% color free. I will say that the low and high frequencies are generally boosted with any reflection filter causing you to make some EQ adjustments and that's by any brand or manufacturer. I find that due to having the microphone in such a tunnel like setting that while it does boost the frequencies I mentioned, it can also boost some unwanted frequencies in the sibilance range depending on its source. For what this is at only $74.99, I think this is an excellent investment or alternative to a traditional reflection shield or a Chaotica eyeball type of tool. At this price, and $49.99 for the lower end option called the Array ISO Bubble, which is pretty much very similar to Chaotica Eyeball. I think this will be a great option and reduce the need for do-it-yourself projects or spending two dollars to $400 or even more on a larger reflection filter option. Now, if you just want the best, treat your room or purchase a higher-end reflection shield. If you want to save money, be more portable while greatly increasing the sound of your vocals in your home or small studio, then this is for you. Now, if this was helpful at all, please hit like and subscribe or visit www.howtoandreviews.com. Till next time. This is without the array. All I have is a metal pop filter in front of the microphone about six inches away. This is how I normally would set up the audio in this particular space. It's not an ideal space at all. There is some acoustic foam, but there is not bass traps really in here. And there is a very low ceiling that's probably only maybe seven feet or under.
carpet on the ground and this is with the air condition about to start running in the background so you can hear it just clicking on right now so the next test is i'm going to try with the acoustic shield or the isolation chamber and see how this sounds i'm not going to say the exact same dialogue but i can say something right now this is a test without the isolation chamber this is a test in the current environment speaking at a normal tone and now this is a test with the isolation chamber with the AC in the background. This is a test in the same environment with the isolation chamber and at the same volumes. This is a test without the isolation chamber. This is a test in the current environment speaking at a normal tone. This is a test with the isolation chamber, same volume, no nylon pop filter, just my metal one at approximately six inches away at the same exact gain on the mic preamp. This is a test without the isolation chamber this is a test in the current environment speaking at a normal tone. I have the metal shock filter, pop filter at the same distance, but the difference is I don't have the dual layer uh, screen or nylon filter on. I find by using that, it uh, kind of dulls the sound even more. I know this is kind of telefocused or focused inside of this chamber, so it kind of emphasizes certain things.